Does your website need more traffic? Well, visit overflowcafe.com today. They make websites popular and over 41,000 people use their service to gain more customers. They are winning our business. What about you? Visit overflowcafe.com today. Hey guys, my name is Leah Rivera, new team player here at Rockefeller's Barbershop. I'm a barber hairstylist. I do braids, blowouts, and balayages, fades, tapers, and military cuts. You can reach me at my cell, 210-570-6126, or on social media at Leah underscore Princess Barber 22. You are listening to I Am Refocus Podcast on iHeartRadio. You are listening to I'm Refocus Podcast with your host, Shamaya Reed. This podcast is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. Now, let's tune in into today's podcast. This is I Am Refocus Podcast. And today, man, you know what time it is. It's Thursday and we're at the barbershop. Rockefeller's Barbershop with Rico Rodriguez, our main partner since September of last year. Man, before we even get started, let me thank our sponsors, man. Top of the list, I want to introduce them. Rico Rodriguez, Rockefeller's Barbershop. I want to give a shout-out to Miss Kim, River City Donuts, Baby McClinton, All Sports Speed and Conditioning. Make sure you go web, uh, check out his website, allsportsfitness.net. And also D.W. Brooks Funeral Home. And last but not least, man, I want to give a big shout-out to overflowcafe.com. You want to know why 41,000 businesses are using their services to get traffic on their website? Head over to OverflowCafe.com and check out their services. So, today, we have a gospel music artist, John Phillip, the CEO of Phillip Free Music. Man, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Good. good so, brother. man, you got some new music out. Tell us about the project, man. Second Wind. Man, uh, yeah, I just released my project about two months ago, uh, going on three months ago, entitled Second Wind. Uh, mm-hmm. This is my first full-length project uh, after my about four-year hiatus uh, of releasing any music in the industry, man, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, I tell people this is like uh, the soundtrack to my testimony. Okay, uh, A lot of music, uh, all the lyrics, uh, everything that's on here speaks to about six years of, of my highs, lows, ups, downs, uh, God maturing me and bringing me to a place of... Um, uh, spiritual self awareness and also you know who I am as a man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm proud of this project and I'm pushing it uh, everywhere I go. Um, this is my baby, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is my baby. I, I love it. I love it. So let's get into the whole process of you being in the music industry. Let's go back in time just a little bit because you're not born and raised in San Antonio. So tell us no. where you're from, man. Uh, I was born in Canton, Ohio, uh, raised in Akron, Ohio, and spent uh, most of my adult life in Cleveland, Ohio. So all of Northeast Ohio is, is where I'm from. And when was the first time you got introduced into music, man? Like first time in the studio or just first time exposed to it? Uh, well, I've been singing in church since I was five. So that, I think that was my first like experience in music ever. My mother's a musician. Uh, all of her siblings, uh, my grandmother, my great aunt, everybody on that side is, you know, very heavily into music. So I think that was my first experience with music, kind of being around it. And uh, I will say probably about high school is when I decided like, hey, you know, I think I you know got a little something, you mm-hmm. know. Started writing a little bit, and it wasn't until after I graduated high school that I got into instruments and all that stuff. So, it's it's been a journey. It's been a journey. And what was the first instrument that you got into, man? After high school, uh, piano. Piano. Yeah. Piano. Self-taught or did you have lessons, man? Self-taught. Wow. So, yeah. tell tell the audience, man, what was the first song that came to mind, even if it wasn't officially uh, released? Uh, that I started playing. Mm-hmm. Or, oh. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So the first song that I, I taught myself how to play was Carl Thomas, I Wish. Okay. He had the piano intro. Da, 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 da. Yeah. That, that was like the very first song. And I remember like, I was like, man, I want to, you know, I want to sing and play this to a girl and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and that just never happened. So <laughs> oh. I was like, yo, I've been practicing and doing all this. and uh, So you had that. Dun, 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 dun. And that's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, so after a while, I was like, okay, well, God, I'll spend all this time practicing and playing. If this is something that you really want me to do, you know, take my hands, take my ears, and, and I asked God to teach me how to play, mm. and the rest is history. When was the first church where you had the opportunity to play you know, in the band, or did you go right into leadership? Uh, the first church I, actually my home church, uh, mm-hmm. Mount Olive Baptist Church in Akron, Ohio, um, my pastor gave me an opportunity to uh, back him up on organ while he was preaching. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when everybody was like, well, I didn't know he played. And I was like, I didn't know I played. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I mean, he, he gave me uh, an opportunity to, you know, to express. And then from there, it just took off. A lot of people started hearing about me playing. Uh, then I started a group back home. Then I moved to California. And that's where I really got immersed into music production, uh, studio singing, writing, all of that stuff. And it just, you know, it literally took off from there. And you kind of hit the fast forward button a little bit. Okay. We <laughs> wind, no, no, you good, you good. <laughs> we wind a little bit. And, and how, when was the first time you took the mic? Did you just one Sunday, wait till the pastor left and <laughs> started singing? <or? laughs> oh, no, we got to go all the way back for that, man. <laughs> uh, the first song that I can remember singing and if my mama listened to this, she might have to correct me. Uh-uh. The first, this first song that I remember singing, um, I can't remember if it's by Chicago Mass or I think Mississippi Mass, one of the big choirs back in the day. It's a song called uh, "Now I Can Say I Love You, Jesus." Can you give us a taste of that? Oh man, <laughs> y'all for real, man? This oh shoot, fresh. okay. Let's see if I remember. Uh, you, you can do a harmony or just one bar. It's up to I'll you. I'll do one bar. I gotta remember. <laughs> that's, that's so long ago. Uh, Alan's watching. Shout out, Alan. Alan Golden. <laughs> I know he's gonna be watching. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. No uh, pressure. No, I'm, I'm trying to. No, that was. I'm old, man. Uh, before I even knew who I was, I remember the words. Or what my mom and daddy meant to me. You were there, guiding my footsteps. And sharing all the love you had for me. I didn't do all of that back hey, that's then. What's up. You know what? You know what's funny? I didn't do all of that back then. <laughs> you, you really gonna hate me for saying this? What? <laughs> but why did that make me think of uh, that Coca Cola? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I hate to go there. This is man. what I get. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just do that little always Coca Cola. <laughs> always Coca Cola. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Sitting in the barber shop. Uh, Oh, that's funny. That's funny. All right, I need an endorsement. <laughs> We're speaking into the existence. Right. Man. But now, you say you got into uh, California. How was that transition? Like, did you know people already out there, or were you just out there networking? Uh, I, I knew two people out there, uh, and at that point in my life, I was like, man, I want to try something new. Uh, and I went all the way to the other end of the country. And that's where I grew up, man. Uh Life happened. Uh, I was like really kind of on my own, and um, all I had was God. Because again, I, I knew people, but not like you know had a support system. Yeah. So when stuff started happening, good and bad, I was like, okay, well, God, I, you know, I really need to hear from you. I need to see you. I need to feel you. I need to know you with me. Hmm. And uh, I would say that that was probably the beginning of like the artist, if you will, uh, telling my testimony through music. And people like really responded to it. And um, <clears throat> every time I would go out and sing and play mm-hmm. um, in California, when I came back to Ohio, I was like, man, there's something different about you. You know, like you mm-hmm. must have been going through some stuff and not knowing everything that I've been through. I mm-hmm. can tell people were blessed by that. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's the beginning, you know, the genesis, uh, if you will, of John Phillip. <laughs> I like that, man. That almost sounds like a third win project. Right. <laughs> Second win, third You know? <laughs> but I like the whole part of the California transition, getting exposed in the music industry. Mm-hmm. How did you really, because, you know, it's hard being in the music industry. How did yeah. you get in? Because, you know, a lot of people seem in the basement or if you're in Texas, the bedroom on Garage Band, but how did you officially <laughs> you know, start making tracks and get in the studio and how did that start? It all started uh, all started in my head, man, and the thing about the industry, uh, especially the music industry, it's not about it's not always about what you can do, it's about who you know. Mm. And 
believe it or not, the music industry is very small. Everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably about two or three degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you have some type of talent, if you're good at songwriting, singing, playing, or if you just happen to do all three or more, uh, chances are your name will get out there a lot quicker and, you know, people will find out who you are, what you do, and, you know, hey, I want to get you on this. You might sound good on this, and it, it takes off from there, man. So, I mean, the, the possibilities and the, and the connectivity is, is almost uh, limitless and endless uh, if you get your foot in the door, and it's quality product. I got to say that. <laughs> That's real. What What's your favorite process in developing the song? Is it when you're writing, or is it when you're actually in the studio recording the vocals? My favorite part of it is producing the track. I think that's for me. That's the the part where I can really, you know, kind of put my foot in, you know, foot in the stuff. Uh, singing, it's okay. Uh, I think part because I've been doing it so long, it's like okay, well, I could just get up and sing and, and kind of know where I want to go. The writing, I enjoy writing, but I think, like I said, that putting the music to it is where I feel I can like really open up and be more creative than I can, you know, with the vocals or or anything else. I mean, you came here to San Antonio what year? 2014. And how was that transition? Because that's another jump. I mean, you went to the West Coast, <laughs> you went back to Ohio, and then now you're here in Texas. Like, what caught your eye in San Antonio? Man, my Texas experience, that came out of nowhere. Because you didn't get no cowboy hat or nothing, right? No. No, yeah. no, I don't have no boots, no belt, <laughs> no hat, no anything. Um, my Texas experience literally came out of nowhere um, I was uh, contacted by a good friend of mine Tim Johnson to come down and uh, hang for New Year and this was right after I had just released uh, my previous single before I dropped Second Wind entitled Wait mm -hmm. and I was pushing that and right around that time I was working on the album mm -hmm. and uh, Tim brought me down and was like you know man you know, I want to bring you down and come <laughs> hang yeah. with me and you just got into character, man. Yeah. You, you act too. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy when you get on this show. You find out a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, come on down, hang with me. <laughs> and uh, I enjoy myself here, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, you know, this is a trip. You know, get away from a minute, go back home because I had a job, and you know, I was uh, serving at a church and all that stuff at that time. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had no plans of relocating, no anything, you know. And uh, I got a call. And uh, I talked to uh, Pastor Ray Brown here in San Antonio, and he said, you know, I, I want to bring you down. Let's work out some numbers. And, uh, you know, we'll make it happen, John. And the rest is history. I'm going to tag him just so tag him for that. that one part. Tag him for that. <laughs> Let's talk some numbers, John, and we'll see. <laughs> oh, God. Shout out to Ray Brown. <laughs> I'm going to tag him, man. He's going to love this. Or he might hate it. I don't know. But man, you, you're a comedian too. Where, nah, where, where, did, where did, did did your whole family crack jokes around the table? Like, oh, <laughs> my mother's side of the family—that's all they do. That's <laughs> that's all they do. So let's let's keep it real, real. Yeah. Do they crack jokes when you was uh, early in the stages of in your music career, or or not really? They didn't crack jokes about me singing. They uh, you they, hear all the all the bad takes. You hit all the bad takes. <laughs> they talked about like they talked about me being short. And uh, <laughs> there was a song that <laughs> my aunts Flash reminded me, right? <laughs> my aunts reminded me of uh, last time I was back home. Uh, I can't remember the song, but they used to say I used to mess up the words to the song as a kid. <laughs> Uh, I could tell you how I feel about you. This, I, this I used to mess up the words as a kid. I don't remember that, but they teased me about that. Man. You just had a remix, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? Instead of a cover song, you just did a whole remix. Yeah, you flipped I, did, it. I flipped it. <laughs> and speak, I like that little segue to this next question. All right. Speaking of flipping it, man, I mean, you went to all these different locations. Do you have a favorite market as far as where you push your music, or it doesn't really matter? As far as like performing or networking or whatever, I don't say I have a favorite. Um, I like to think that I I have music that reaches everybody, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be the lyrics touch you know my peers or, or my generation, and the music touches uh, my contemporaries or the words or whatever you know reaches the older generation. Um, me as an artist, I, I I consider that when I'm writing music, I want to write music mm -hmm. for everybody. You know, I, you know, I'm 32. Um, I still want to be able to give a message that everybody can at least pull something from. Hmm. And speaking of markets, how do you, as an artist, you know, you're a CEO of your own business, 
how do you find the right and the wrong ways based on your experience how to market yourself on social media and just in the community like what's the do's and don'ts let's start with the don'ts (laughs) Uh, do not be too personal Um, and what I mean by that is you know as as artists and as messengers no serials Right. Uh, <laughs> as artists and as messengers, uh, people are looking to us for uh, for guidance and a, and a number of other things. So you have to be careful not to become too personal. It's something, you know, having a bad day or, or whatever. Uh, people are looking to you. So you always want to uh, be a positive light, uh, be something that people can can glean from. Mm-hmm. Um, and then don't abuse social media. And what I mean by that is... Uh, just don't be on there talking about a whole bunch of crazy stuff, you know, mm-hmm. stuff that takes away from what you're trying to push. That's good. Yeah. Um, like me, I'm a singer, artist, you know, musician, producer. Um, I'm not going to be on social media talking about, man, I got a flat tire, man. Who's going to come pick me up? <laughs> you know, on my artist page, I wouldn't do that. Now, on my personal page, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But no, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm just not like going to do that. that. Man. Maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, the do's, and that's just a, a couple don'ts, but uh, do, do push yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, push who you are, believe in who you are. Uh, for everybody else to kind of get on your bandwagon, you gotta you toot your own horn, if you will, and, and not be arrogant, but just believe you know, let people, yeah, believe in yeah. yourself. Let people know, hey, I have a project. I'm a songwriter, musician, or artist. Hey, you know, check this clip out. The song I was working on, and you know, get people involved in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, all my friends, all my followers, hey, how you doing? You know, wishing y'all a great day. Uh, look up my music. Check out my Instagram. Check out my SoundCloud. You know, just. Make sure to get people involved and, and let people know and keep that constant communication open. Mm-hmm. You know, you can post something and, you know, two or three weeks later, nobody hear from you. And then you wonder why you only got like one like. <laughs> you well, know, you got to keep people motivated, okay. keep people inspired by what you're doing. Sometimes what you put in is what you get out of it, too. Well, that's true, too. Because you ain't liking nobody's yeah. stuff. Well, they going to be looking at yourself. Skip. Right. Skip. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's, Skip. that's how social media is. That's why I'm live right now <laughs> on my page. <laughs> But let's touch on that. You know, we, we you know, young generation, you know, mm-hmm. let's talk to the young folk, man. What you want to say to them? Let's, let's educate <laughs> them, educate them, you know? Educate. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what words of wisdom will you give the young generation who wants to be in the music industry? How can they prepare themselves? Because you can't just say one day, I like to sing. You know, you can't just say, I like to play the piano. You know, give them some words of wisdom. What's some of the steps they need to have a, a strong foundation before they just throw themselves out there? Without being too deep, uh, believe in yourself, one. Mm-hmm. And then also get around uh, get around a group of people that are going to not only believe in you, but be honest with you. Mm, that's good. Um, the industry is kind of fickle and funny and everybody has clicks and all that stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, but get around people that you know that will believe in you and and push you to be great and then also be honest with you even you know I have friends that if I'm not doing so good you know they gonna hey, crack man. them jokes. Yeah, they, they'll crack, and that's our way, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then I have some friends that be like, "Nah, that's not it, bro." You know, <laughs> go back and try it again. And uh, and I appreciate that, you know. Uh, so believe in yourself. Have a, a, a support system that's gonna believe in you, push you, and be honest. And then also, don't be afraid to take a risk. Hmm. I mean, you you never know, you know, what's gonna touch people, what's gonna be that next hit. What's going to inspire somebody else if you don't, you know, step out of that fear and go for it? You know, I can tell you I've had several days where I was fearful to release this project, mm-hmm. like several days, because when I was writing these songs, I can remember like vivid moments of me crying, you know, being upset with God, being upset with myself, uh, you know, at some of the things that was going on in my life at certain times. And I remember probably about, Halfway through the mixing process, I really asked myself, is this something that I really want to do? Like, am I ready to release, like, my personal testimony on mm-hmm. wax for everybody to hear? And I took a risk. You know, I could have, you know, stayed within the confines of, you know, my personality and chill and relax and all that stuff mm-hmm. and missed out on an opportunity to bless people and missed out on a move of God, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, because... 
I did not take a risk. You know, I did not step outside my comfort zone and believe in myself and push what I knew deep down God was giving me to do. And so that's I would probably say that's the, the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to take a risk. I mean, no, there's no such thing as a bad idea, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And um, you never know what you have inside of you until you bring it out of you. And and that's so. a good uh, point for young people and just general people mm-hmm. in general because a lot of times in life we find ourselves becoming idle yeah. because the fact that yep. we won't go out and take a risk. Because I heard someone say, uh, if you starve your doubt and feed your faith, well, you're gonna start seeing a difference. Most definitely, because feeding your faith is not just thinking positive all day and you know. I ain't got nothing against yoga, but if you if you're doing yoga hoping that life is just going to magically change, it's 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 more than just a mindset. It's it's a habit. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta form a habit and touch on that. How can people, based on your experience, I mean, mm-hmm. you're you're a CEO of Feel Free Music Co. Mm-hmm. First of all, when did you start that? Uh, that started about eight years ago. Um, it's my production company, my publishing company. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everything I do musically is up under Feel Free and just, you know, a little brief history about Feel Free, why it's named Feel Free. Uh, when I when I named it Feel Free, I wanted it to have like a meaning. Uh, so for me, feeling free and, and what I do, feeling free in my music and, and my message, my ministry, and just in my life, uh, through my music, through the songs that I write, through what I publish, and then also uh, Philip is my middle name, mm-hmm. so I wanted to attach something uh, to kind of leave a legacy. You know, I don't have any kids right now, uh, but when I have children, you know, mm-hmm. my nieces and nephews, they grow up and they say, "Hey, you know, my my uncle or my father, he has something that I can carry on." You know, feel free was his, you know, his message, his legacy. This is what he strived to work on, and I want to feel free in what I do. That's good. And let's let's dig deep into that because I was what I was also saying about you know when you're taking action on your faith and you're feeding your faith and you're starving your fear. Tell us because you know when you started that business, it's not like you snap your fingers. You got ten million dollars waiting right. for you. Tell us what was the process of learning how to operate and, and manage your new business now. It did not happen overnight, and I made plenty mistakes. Well, let me tell you. Um, but the thing that, that hindsight always, uh, the thing that I can say if I had to go back and tell my younger self is keep going. Um, as you know, as a producer, as an artist, a musician, and again, I'm just kind of narrowing in to, to music. Mm-hmm. Um, music is a business, and when you're dealing with people in music and business, you have to treat it as both, you know. Um, and this is not a bad thing. Musicians kind of have a code, you know, amongst each other, you know, where, hey, you, you look out for me, I'll look out for you, you know, put me on this gig and I'll do this for you, X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. And uh, that can be a good thing and then that can be a bad thing. I've experienced a lot of the bad things when I was <laughs> starting, out, <laughs> starting out. So I learned, you know, contracts are always major. And then do your research when it comes to your business. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to be able to, you know, push yourself out there. Be aware of what you can do. Uh, don't try to overdo it. Don't try to do something that you know you can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also push yourself. Hey, I'm a producer. I'm a musician. This is what I have. Listen to what I have. Uh, you know, Business cards, the whole not being able to, again, like I said, believe in yourself, market yourself, put yourself out there uh, to specific clientele. I'm not going to go to a welding shop and say, hey, I'm a musician. You know what y'all need? Y'all want some piano while y'all welding metal? No. Like you can fill out an application. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but being able to uh, appropriately put yourself in the right position and then also allowing God to do what he's going to do. God will always open the door. And that's the real thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that that that's how it happened for me. You know, I made my mistakes, you know, not signing contracts and it was kind of trusting. Oh, you know, you give me that money and we finish the album and I still don't have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Four or five years later. Yeah. But, um, Back to what you were talking about before we got into the whole feel free thing. Uh, staying positive, all that, you know, mental stuff and positive tweets and posts and all that stuff. That's fine. Uh, but the biggest part, 
And I think this is where some of us have a disconnect and, you know, I want to do better and actually seeing it is mm-hmm. applying that. Yeah. You have to apply that. You know, all the good posts and all that stuff, that make you feel good for a minute. But if you don't apply, you know, what's being taught or what's being presented to you, you kind of just at a stalemate at, at some point in life. You're you know? just a great poster. And uh, yeah, you're just a great poster, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, I, I kind of struggled with that for a minute, probably like right before I moved to Texas. Mm. Um yeah, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I got this single out. I'm about to do this. And everything, it was all good up here. Mm-hmm. And there was no, like, getting it out of here, no translation, no application, no nothing. That's good. And then I kept asking God, well, no, you told me all this stuff was going to happen, and I see this, and everybody's talking about, you know, John, this is great. Mm-hmm. And without no deep mystical voice, you know, you have to, it wasn't <laughs> nothing like that. You know, God just, at work one day, God just said, you got to apply. You yeah. got to apply. And, you know, I didn't fall out or roll around on the floor. This was, <laughs> I got it. You no know, it, you, no drooling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got I understood at that point, you know, because a lot of us have a lot of great ideas, you know, and we want to see ourselves in a better place in life and in our finances and, and whatever we're doing. Yeah. But if you if you don't apply that. You know, apply that to what you're doing. That's how this came about. You know, I apply, you know, my faith, my trust, my belief and taking that risk. I apply all of that to this project. And uh, we're here today talking about second win, John Phillip. <laughs> and always yeah. keeping in mind, you have to be a sponge everywhere you go. Most There's definitely. There's nothing wrong having a mentor. There's nothing wrong asking for a mentor mm-hmm. to be your mentor. Because recently I... I just got a new mentor and he's been exposing me you know what I mean like hey bro like uh, you see this area and see that area like yeah. you need like you were saying earlier in the show you need people that's gonna be honest with you and who has the best intentions yeah. to help you grow because when you're trying to help someone else grow and they want you to grow at the same time that's called leverage man yeah and yeah. talk about that how, how can one who's in the industry maybe they're not seeing any results like they're just idle right now like they want to do things but it's all in the head Mm -hmm. what's some of the things they got to do to fix that get around somebody you know that is where you see yourself Mm -hmm. you know always take that next step up Mm -hmm. you know you want to be somewhere or you see yourself envision yourself somewhere get around or just you know ask somebody hey you know i see you're doing this this is what i aspire to do you know it's just any kind of encouragement, any words, any wisdom. Um, and I, I'll say this. Uh, when I first started playing, I heard all this stuff, like all the stuff that I wanted to do. And I remember I was at a friend's house and he turned on this artist uh, named Doobie Powell. And when, like the moment that I heard his music, it was like, oh, my God, this is the stuff that I've been hearing in my head. Like, mm. this is the stuff. And I had listened to his music, it, you know, like, like studied his writings. Mm-hmm. And probably about, I would say almost 10 years, well, not 10 years, but some time after that, I had a chance to not only meet Doobie Pyle, but be his background singer for wow. five years. Wow. And every time. Not, not five nights. No, not five nights. Five years, wow. Five, yeah, five years. I mean, and, and we we still work together uh, since I lived here. I haven't a chance to you know really be on the road with him as much. But every, I mean, every time we talk, and I mean every time, I'm sure he's tired of me telling him. <laughs> every time we talk, I always let him know. You know, I I thank God uh, that he was able to allow us to cross paths uh, because I listen to his music. I tell him all the time, like. I remember hearing your music and was like, yo, that's what I want to do. Like, mm-hmm. I want to sound like that. I want to play like that. That's what I want to do. And, and again, if for everybody that's listening, if you aspire to do something, start looking at, start listening to, start researching where you want to be. For mm-hmm. you to get to that next level, you got to take that next level thinking and take that even higher. That's, ooh, you know? that's good because, man, you touched on something right there. You can't take the old mindset no. to, to new territory, no. man. No, because there's levels to this. I'm not gonna go there, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, you you can't you can't allow yourself to become stale. Mm-hmm. You know, any anything stale is eventually thrown out. Ooh, Ooh. hey, we got know. a book in there too, man. <laughs> 
John Philip book coming out next year. <laughs> man, dropping. I don't need to talk no more. You got the nah, show now. No, go ahead, man. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> nah, let's touch on that because go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, any, anything stale. I mean, th- there's there's always freshness. You know what I mean? The the wind is always fresh. You know, That's even good. being in this yeah, building, you, there's, man, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> you know, you step outside, you're not going to feel the same gust of air that you felt that's good. 30 seconds ago. Wind is always moving. Ideas are always moving. There, there's always new resources, new new projects, new connections out there. But if you confine yourself to what you're used to, eventually that's going to run out for you and not supply you Man, for that good. time anymore. Wow. So what happens? You become malnourished. You become stale. Everything starts sounding the same, looking the mm-hmm. same. And then what does that do to you? Oh, this is gloomy. Oh, everything's <laughs> the same. You know, that mm-hmm. that. That darkens your mentality. You know, that that puts a damper on you. It messes up how you see yourself. And eventually, people start seeing you the way you see you. Exactly. So if you can't see yourself growing, then everybody's going to be like, oh, here comes John again with that song. Right, exactly. (laughs) Yep, yep. So, I mean, you you hit it right on, man. But that's the truth because... It's not just in music. It's like whatever field you are. Yep. If you're a basketball player, man, you do the same drill, but you don't expand. See, that's the key. If you don't expand what you can do, right? number one, you won't even know if you can do it. That's true. Because it's like, imagine yourself, you're a basketball player, you're at the gym, soon the same three-point shoot, you know, shot, but you're not practicing on your free throws. You're right. not doing no defensive drills. When you're in the game, coach won't be able to use you. So I'm going to flip that analogy and say, God won't be able to use you if you're in the game of life, but you're not expanding yourself. And like you were saying earlier, the importance of having like-minded people who are trying themselves to go places, because that's another thing. You can't be with people who do not want to grow. Because yeah. that's the quickest way to get some messed up milk. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Them eggs going to be really messed up. Yep. Because they've been there for like three years. Yep. Ain't nobody cracked that egg, man. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's early, man. You I know mean, what that, happens. <laughs> that's it, man. I mean, you, you got to be around. And I, I'm not going to go. You got to be around people. Oh, that, keep it real, man. Yeah, you, you got to be around people that that see greatness in you. That's good. You know? You got to be around people and not only see it, but are committed to helping pull that greatness and out develop, of you yeah. and, and, and develop and cultivate that. And uh, I think I see, who is that? Rachelle Smith. I'm going to use yes. her as an example. Okay. Yo, yo. Um, when I got to RBC and uh, was going through some stuff in the ministry, she was one of the, the people who, you know, always put me to the side and said, son, I'm praying for you. Mm. I see greatness in you. That's she used right. to tell me that all the time, all the time. And, you know, when, and when you kind of in the funk, you don't really want to hear that. You know, you want to have right. your moments. Like, I heard that before. Yeah, I've heard that before. I got the playlist. <laughs> but it, it it wasn't until I probably like the 30th time that she said that, that I was like, somebody does see it. Mm. And not just her saying that, mm. but her saying that for so long, she seen something that I could not see at that time. Mm. And that kind of was like the, the breaking point for me. Like, okay, well, hold on. Let me, you know, let me get myself together because mm. there is something in me. That's good. Uh, the breaking that, point. Yeah. That there is something in me that people see and that people identify with and, and want to see mm-hmm. come to fruition, mm-hmm. you know, want to see manifested, if you will. <laughs> and so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> if I haven't told you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yes, but yeah, bless you. <laughs> I really like that key word, the breaking point. Yes, sir. It's almost like when are you going to get tired of being the same? You know, because it's like you heard the same. We all heard the same. You mm-hmm. like what's on TV? Get up and change the channel. Right. Well, that's the same thing in life. If you don't really like your surrounding, your situation, do something you never done before. Mm-hmm. And it's not saying do something crazy. Right. It's just saying, you know, let's create some better habits and take the process. Because, you know, what what's some of the things that you've done based on your experience, you know, being in, in business and pursuing your dreams? What's some of the good habits that you learn that if I have those kind of habits, it prepares myself to be in position for success? Staying on top of my craft. Uh, I would say being consistent in what I do. Uh, those are two things that if I could tell my younger self that I, I probably believe I'll be further along. But uh, being consistent, being dedicated, 
Uh, and then just, again, keep going. Don't be afraid to grow. Don't be afraid to stretch out. Um, I think those are things now that I'm applying overall in my life, and I'm seeing uh, greater results, uh, greater blessings, the whole nine, because I am being consistent to who I am, being true to who I am, mm-hmm. uh, following through on everything I said I would do, not being afraid to take that risk, stretch myself. And then also, uh, in that, don't be afraid uh, to embrace you know other connections like i i would probably say in the past two or three years i've connected with so many other independent artists and you know we all go through the same thing Mm -hmm. we all experience the same thing on different levels um and we support each other we we push each other we always you know like each other's posts and then we're also always praying for one another that's good you know pushing each other hey you know john i'm going through this you know hey i got you man ain't nothing you know we we have a camaraderie amongst one and Again, don't don't be afraid to do that. You know, you never know uh, what open door can come from that connection, can come from that camaraderie uh, that you have with, with your inner circle or people that you're networking with, you know, in the same field. So I say that that's something that I would say for me, I'm experiencing right now. And it's afforded me like great opportunities and like changed my whole vision and outlook on, you know, how to live and operate as a you know artist, as a musician, as a producer in 2018. And I have to add this, man. No one expected this, but I have to give a shout out to Jordan McCook, man, because he's on the show. And this one thing he said that I never just forgot, man. He said, see yourself just like you, you go to Starbucks and you see Nike and you see all these top brands. You mm-hmm. got to take ownership in what you're building. Yes, sir. And you got to. That's good. You can't just be like, well, I'm not good like Nike. I'm not good like you know, LeBron James. I'm not good like so and so or this brand or that brand. You gotta look at your brand as if it's just as good mm-hmm. as anybody else's. Why? Because they have a story too. And I yep. bet you my life is probably just like anybody else. They struggle. Yes, sir. There's I'm- not one big business very wealthy person who has not paid their price I agree. for success. I definitely agree. And I think a lot of people, they try to skip that part. They want to fast forward to the mansion. <laughs> There's no such thing as fast forward to the mansion. Because like a lot of people say, if that's all that's in your mind, well, when you get there, it's just going to be as messed up as your one house. I mean, you know, your, your one apartment, mm-hmm. your one bedroom. You know, you got stuff all over. Well, it's going to be the same thing in the mansion. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't manage $5, how are you going to manage $5 million, $5 right. billion? right. right. And you that's know? true. There's no shortcut to success. I like that. I mean, there, there's there's no way you can expect to get the maximum results uh, of a Nike, of a you know Reebok, LeBron, or whoever you you may idolize. Mm-hmm. There's no shortcut to that. And if you happen to find one, first of all, call me. Yeah, call me and let me that. know. And then two. Tell me how you can honestly appreciate what you have if you didn't go through anything or lose anything to gain, exactly. you know, that success. I mean, there's so much that I've I've had to give up uh, to to get to where I am, you know, and I, I further appreciate, you know, what you know some of my parents and, you know, other people that I looked up to or admire. Uh, I understand their struggle because now I can identify. I've had to give up it's certain your things. Turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've had to yeah. give up certain things to gain certain things. That's yeah. that's the whole meaning behind sacrifice. To give up something to gain something better. Mm. It's like a rubber band, you know. You stretch it far enough, and then you release it. What it does? Mm-hmm. That's life, you know. If if you're willing to for a season or however long God wants you to. to to just stay being stretched yeah. and stay being pressed because when it's your time to start doing your thing, mm-hmm. man, it's like you can really tell who's been prepared for the moment. Yeah. Because if you yeah. don't, if you can't handle it, it won't last. Yep. It'll be there and be gone. Just that's like, true. You know, that's why microwave success and, you know, if I just wish for it, it'll happen. One of these days, I'm going to just get a million dollars. Somebody's going to come around my corner, knock my door, and say, hey, here's a check for a million dollars. That never has happened. It never will happen. <laughs> and it's, it's a good thing that it doesn't because, like you were saying, almost saying, you learn to really appreciate Most the process. Definitely. Yep. And let's talk about the process because I want to drill in people's head, like, going back to the top brands and the top athletes, top movie stars. Mm-hmm. 
not only did they pay the price, but they have a passion. Like, you can see the passion yeah. every single day. It, it's no wonder why their marketing works, because they're so passionate about what they're doing. Yeah. How important is it for someone to be passionate about their gifts, their talents that God's given them? Man, it's everything. You know, your passion is, is your life. You know, people... People equate your passion with how how lively you are in what you do. Uh, people tell me all the time, you know, like John, when you sing it, it, it you know, I, I hear your passion, I feel your passion, and I'm in, I'm like, thank you, God bless, you know. But in my heart, I'm like, yes, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what I love to do. I'm very passionate about my gifts, and then also who I'm doing it for. You know, I'm very passionate about the God I serve, the, the you know, the God I worship. So when I get to combine those two passions it's like oh okay yeah we we got something good going I on i like that say yeah. that again that when i get part, to combine the two passions you said you combine your passion with god yeah oh yeah saying? yeah yeah because that that right there man that's that's yeah. a good thing to talk about yeah i mean what, what, tell them explain a little bit what you mean by <laughs> that man so okay everybody know everybody knows me knows i love music i love what i do i'm very passionate about my singing my playing producing all that stuff my passion in, is heightened in a sense mm. when I get to do it for the one I love, the, the gift giver, you know, mm, the one right. who gave me the opportunity, the gifts, and for me all the whatever to do what I do. So every time I'm up before people, you know, performing songs off the project, it's like, okay, God, I'm not only am I excited to be singing, but to be singing for you and to, you know, use my gifts to bring people closer to you. It's like, oh man, you know, no break. Let's get it. You know, that's let, that's <laughs> let's good. do it. So to everybody out there that's listening, uh, whatever your passion is, don't don't let your passion die. Uh, feel your passion. You know, don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Uh, it's your passion. You know, it's your gift. You know, believe in yourself, push yourself and don't let your passion die. If I could you know, say that to myself about 12 years ago, I would keep drilling that. Don't let your passion die. You know, no matter who comes, who goes. What supports you mm, think you good. have or don't have? That's good. You know, when you don't have nothing else, you always got God, and you will always have your passion, like mm. your passion, man. <laughs> that, that's a great segue to this question, man. Speaking of passion, you quote the giver. I like that, man. That needs to be on a t-shirt. The giver, the giver, <laughs> man. You got so many golden nuggets, man. So, touch on this, man. How has faith molded your journey? Uh, we could talk about this all day. Oh, like, we got man. about fifteen minutes. Yeah, we could talk about. It. I'll try to. Ma- I'll try to make it five at least. Faith has been the, and I have to say this, the number one um, factor in everything that has happened for me. Um, deep down, I always knew that I would be doing something. You know, musically, I would be be attached to something musically. Uh, but again, when people see so much in you and you begin to hear it so much, it's like, OK, wow, well, I, I, I believe this. You know, everybody's saying it. They got to see something that's obviously there. Okay. Uh, the thing that I wrestled with before I get to how it molded me, the thing that I wrestled with was always feeling like. Like I'm like, OK, you know, mm-hmm. or average or something, you mm-hmm. know, and I've never I've never been one to just put myself out there. My my natural personality is laid back. You know, I take the back seat to you know anything mm-hmm. I'll support. I'll push, you know, the next person before I push myself. <laughs> Sound like my cousin, man. Like, <laughs> that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's me. And um, when people started saying like, yo, I see this for you and or, or I started feeling certain things in my spirit that led me to where I am now. You know, I was like, OK, well, God. I don't see this, but if this is something you want me to do, you know, please take me through this. Mm. And that whole faith piece, when you don't see it, you have to see it. Like, I don't, <laughs> like I when, when you don't see it, you, you still have to see it. Like the album, the studio, the connections, everything that I'm experiencing now. I seen this stuff years ago. Mm-hmm. I seen it in dreams. I seen it at work, staring at the computer screen, like seeing myself singing on different stages and, and working with different people. I seen it all, but it, it wasn't like physically manifested in front of my eyes like I'm holding this. Mm-hmm. So the, the whole faith piece for me, I can speak from experience. It's something that, that grew me up real quick in God. And also, like I said, is the number one factor in me experiencing everything I am now. Of course, my faith had to be built up yeah. in different stages, you know, 
I couldn't I couldn't see this level of faith 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I seen the level of faith to get me enough to, you know, record a song in the studio or give this song to this person. Mm -hmm. And so seeing that, that increased my faith even more to believe God for better. Oh, I think I, I got I hear an album in my spirit, mm -hmm. but I don't see nothing. I don't see the finances to do it. I don't see the, the band that I want to play on it. I don't see none of that, you know. So when I started listening to people and doing this, okay, like, God, I can do this. And then my faith was increased even more. Going mm -hmm. through certain trials, that that pushed my faith even more to believe God for greater than even what I had seen at that time. Mm -hmm. And even doing this album, you know, my faith was at an all-time high before I did this. And then when I started really thinking about me doing a full album, my faith said no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I didn't see the money. I didn't see the resources. And honestly, I didn't want to do this project on my own, mm -hmm. you know, because I was like, you know, God, I don't want nobody saying or who he think he is. He's singing, writing and playing and producing and all that stuff on his own album. You know, that was like the that was the flesh part of me. Keyword day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how, how many times have <laughs> they got in the way? Yeah, they. You know, mm -hmm. that 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 was my faith killer because I was like, you know, I want to stay to myself and and, and all they of came this around. And, and, and they came around they and was like, yeah, line. you can <laughs> yeah, get this person to do this. They'll be good for you. They'll be good for you. And it wasn't until and I'm going to tell you, all it wasn't until I started working on. God is in control that uh, I was like, I think I am going to do this. That's good. Like, I think I'm going to take this step. I'm a I'm a pour my everything into this album. I'm a play everything. I'm a write everything. I'm a sing everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and this that when I say this is my baby, this is my baby. This is this is the evidence of my faith. Oh, that's good. This is this is the that's evidence good. of every time I look at this, every time I, I hear any one of these songs playing on the radio, or somebody sends me a message or a screenshot saying they're listening to this. It, it does something to my faith because I remember my process in doing this when it came to my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't see this for me about six years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes I have it to pinch. slowly revealed. Yeah, it was I mean, layer by layer, yeah. song by song, idea by idea, you know, everything. It, it, it was a process. So back to what you said, this faith was the number one factor for me in doing this and even now, I expect God to do so much more. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what's, you know, on the horizon for John Philip or Feel Free or Second Wind or anything else. Mm -hmm. But because my faith was built up enough to do this, mm -hmm. I can trust God and praise God for more of these. Yep. Because I think a lot of people, the reason why they're idle, the reason why they're stuck, the reason why they are complaining about life and everybody, you know, so-and-so did this to me. Mm -hmm. and They just got a whole list. You'd be surprised. Like, they got a whole list. You know what? Because I'm going to be real. I used to be that person. Before we had the podcast, before we had the magazine, before we had SBS, mm -hmm. I used to be the guy that was bitter. Like, man, ain't nobody helping me. Well, guess what? You got to step up. You know, if you're, if you're only hoping that other people step up for your own battles that you're supposed to be fighting, mm -hmm. nah, man, that's not how it works. You had to earn your own stripes and you had to pay your own price. You can't pay the sacrifice with somebody else's work. You just said something that hit my spirit. I'm trying to be cool. <laughs> now go ahead, man. You, that, when, when you're destined for greatness, nobody can take that from you. When, when you're destined to succeed, when, when you're marked, there's nobody in this galaxy, in this universe mm -hmm. that can take your place. There's no other John Philip. There's no other John Philip. There's no other Shamaya Reed. There's no other De There's no other SPS. Mm -hmm. But the flip side to that is if you don't walk in that, you automatically forfeit your place. Mm. Automatically. That's and I, I learned that doing this. That's you know, good. everybody say, oh, John, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. And it wasn't until I accepted that God gave me something to do. And I, you know, walked in that. I, 
lived it, I breathed it, you know, I faithed it, if you will. It wasn't until that point I said, man, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to be the reason why I'm not blessed. Mm. Ooh. I'm not going to, I'm not going to forfeit my Yo, place in the kingdom. Say that one more time. I'm not going to be the reason why I'm not blessed. Wow. <laughs> Pastor Philip. <laughs> man. I'm not going to forfeit, you know, my, my position, my rights to the kingdom. I'm not going to forfeit, you know, my, my destiny. I'm not going to forfeit my future because I don't see it right away mm-hmm. or I want a shortcut to the process. It doesn't happen like that. If you're destined for it, God will always surround you with people that will help get you to the next level. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't get there, it's not because God didn't provide the resources. Again, look at yourself. If mm-hmm. you're not somewhere where you see yourself being and, and you know that people have been assigned to you and, and, mm-hmm. and surrounded you and tried to push you into that next check level, you got, you got to check the mirror. You got to. Got to. You might have some on your face, man. Yeah, you <laughs> wash your face. <laughs> <laughs> it goes right back to the basis, man. Because, yeah. I mean, out of all the people that we've been interviewing on this, on this podcast show, there's a common thread. And that common thread is perseverance. Mm-hmm. Clarity, yes, and wanting better, and wanting better doesn't mean selfish. Like I just want to be better than so and so. Wanting better is like, all right, yesterday is gone. Mm-hmm. Today is what I got right now. Mm-hmm. Whatever is tomorrow, I'm gonna be hopeful for it and happy for it. But what I have right now, the time right now, is what I got. And a lot of people forget that they dwell so much in the past yeah. that they just keep holding to the past and bringing it to the future and yeah. just it's like a it's like a bad loop yeah you know and they wonder why they're stuck in that funk well what are you what are you still holding on to in the past that's preventing you to have a better future mm-hmm. because today is today yeah like you never know how many handshakes you can have today if you just let go of the past that's right you know it can be right. it can be something simple as you think about all the mess that happened in your life, and it can be somebody in the gas station, and that could be your new client, or that could be your new mentor. Yeah. But you never know because you're so stuck on the past. Mm-hmm. That's real. Touch on that real quick while we got about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Say it's somebody out there, all right, they are trying their hardest, but they just feel like they stuck. Maybe they're bitter. Something might have happened. Maybe someone said something to them back in the day and just kind of they carry that weight. Tell them how how can they drop that weight so that they can be free from all that mess. That's that's loaded. That's good. That's good. Uh, What you can do uh, is believe in who you are and then also get back to the good about you. Mm-hmm. Um, I dealt with that for a minute, um, and y'all were kind of around to witness that. Um, you know, always thinking about, okay, well, this happened to me. I'm hurt by this person. I'm hurt by this situation. Uh, if you keep festering it, you know, you think about it for an hour, hour turn into five, five turn into a day, a day turn into a week, you know, and it just keeps going. Uh, but when I started focusing on the good and what was out there for me, I slowly started coming out of that, you know, and everybody's process is different. Uh, but what I would say is start focusing on the good thing, start focusing on, you know, the next that's out there because this, that, that stuff has an expiration date. Uh, darkness is not always meant to last. You know, we just went through uh, daylight savings time, you know, even though the darkness is, is a little longer than what we expected, the dark, the sun still comes up. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's there's an expiration date to everything that's going on in your life, especially the, the negative stuff. So think about the good. Think about what's next for you, what's better for you. Put yourself in that better place. And I guarantee you, you'll be in that better place, you know, quicker than what you thought you would be. It forces you to get uncomfortable to yeah. where you currently are. And now you have no choice yeah. but to develop better habits. Yep. Because it's like this. All right. You got Google Maps. I'm just a visual person, man. Mm-hmm. All right. How you expect to use it if you haven't picked your destination? You know, I could be all the way in China lost. Yes, sir. You know, I could be 
I could be in Brazil, just lost. Like, man, I can't stand life. Well, you haven't picked your destination. You I got, got one, I got one. one better for you. Oh, drop it. I got one better for you. How can you? How can you expect to see yourself from where you put in your destination? Mm-hmm. There's a little green button that says go. <laughs> you got to hit that button. You got to uh, hit the button. That's good. I mean, you can see yourself in that place and, you know, you can put in, I, I, I want to be healed. Let's just say, I want to be healed. That's I've good. been sick all these days. I want to be healed. Start taking those steps to be healed. Hit that go button. That's good. I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm tired of being depressed. I want to be renewed in my mind. Mm, hit that good. go button. Man, it's like having the blueprints, but nobody got to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's one good blueprint. <laughs> but until you go to work, yeah. it will never come reality. Yeah, and, man. And, and let's be clear on this, too. I'm not telling people people to just think of anything wild and crazy and just name it and claim it. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But within reason, you know, know your passion, Mm -hmm. know your purpose. And the only way you can really know what your purpose is, is if you start exploring what makes you happy. Right. So if it's music, if it's photography, if it's basketball, if it's doctor, if it's lawyer, whatever it is, you got to fill in that blank. Yeah. And once you do that, God will take care of the rest. Because yep. I like yep. how you said you brought your passion and you brought God mm-hmm. and you put that together. It's almost like let's go to the current times, you know, smartphones. You're going to have to charge up every now and then. Charge up. If you think you can go through life without God being in control and asking him for some advice, yeah. you will be that poor iPhone or Android. When the battery dies and you ain't charging up. How's that phone going to function? It's useless. <laughs> That's good because, it's yes, useless. you, the individual, become useless mm-hmm. because you're preventing yourself from necessary growth and nourishment. And That's how can good, you get that nourishment, man? man? Tell them, man. How, how can you get that nourishment? Go Read back it. Go back to, the, go back to the, the phone thing. If you're not charged up, if, if you're not plugged in, if you're not connected— you got to stay connected. Stay connected to the source. Stay connected to the thing that's going to energize you. Mm-hmm. You know, your passion, uh, being around people, motivate, you know, whatever. Stay stay connected to that source. Stay plugged into the thing that's going to energize you. That's going to keep you charged. That's going to, you know, and if you step away from the charge, you still got some sustenance to keep you through the day. Mm-hmm. You know, stay connected to that thing that's going to energize you so you can get the maximum use out of what you need to do. I like that. And I had to add this thing, man. If all you got is now, if all you can do is appreciate what you got, start there. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times people, you know, they see you with, come out with CDs and they already, oh, my God, he's trying to do all this stuff. He, he think he all celebrity status. Well, <laughs> you had a choice back when mm-hmm. that first came to idea in your mind. Yeah. Like, man, what if I started making these songs? What mm-hmm. if I started going to California and going to Texas. That's real. You know, just like you said, press and go. Mm-hmm. If you don't take the action to actually go, you never know who's going to be the next president. You never know who's going to be the next MVP in NBA. You never know who's going to be the next CEO giving back to charity and building schools and all over the world, you right. know, doing that good stuff. It could be you. Right. The person listening, it can be you. That's right. And that's what we're trying to tell you. And that's why we have people like John Phillip on the show, because they're showing their journey of how good faith, good action, yep. and clarity can get you places. Yes, sir. What's some yes, last sir. words? And before I let you go, we are going to do old town. Okay, I, 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 can, I can make it go, man. I can make it go. <laughs> before you drop your, uh, your, your uh, websites and everything, how they can contact you. Uh, what's something that you just want to say before you? I'm gonna shut up and let you do that. Uh, something real quick. Last words. Uh, I just again, I just, I, I want to encourage people, uh, anybody that's listening, uh, to just go for it. Um, you have a passion, pursue your passion. You have a dream, don't stop till that dream becomes a reality. Uh, and again, just go like go for it. I mean, I'm I'm a perfect example. Uh, of going for it and not to say that you're going to, you know, just go straight through. You may have some stops, some detours along the way, but, you know, pick that dream back up, pick that thing back up that, you know, is burning on the inside of you uh, that you, you know, you, you can't go to sleep without thinking about it. And when you do go to sleep, it's in your dreams, it's in your thoughts. Uh, it stays with you day in, day out, you know, pursue it, pursue it until it becomes your reality. And even when you get that, 
keep going because there's so much out there for you. Um, this whole project, Second Wind, uh, it's about that. It's about, you know, my my testimony about me starting something. And then I got held up along the way. I, I felt like I stopped. And God breathing back into me, you know, that wind to keep going and keep pushing. Man, so, I mean, that's, you know, those that are listening, uh, plug now. Uh, y'all can check out uh, check out John Phillip on uh, Facebook, Feel Free Music Co. Um, Second Wind, the album is on iTunes, Google Play, all your digital outlet stores. I'm on Instagram and Twitter, Feel Free Music. That's P-H-I-L-F-R-E-E. And that's that's the whole like mission, music, movement, if you will, like behind what I'm doing now, man. I believe uh, there's a lot of people <clears throat> who uh, who have dreams and visions and, and see themselves doing better, but don't know either how to get it out or they've hit a, you know, a roadblock or they've let discouragement or depression set in like this. This I want this to, to minister to those people. That's why I put this whole project together. Uh, I believe God gave me something to minister to those type of people. That's good. And uh, I'm not stopping until, you know, I see everyone I can, you know, blessed and set free. Like, that's the whole purpose behind feel free and all that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. I just I believe uh, there's so much inside of each and every one of us. And um, if God is going to use me to be the key to unlock all of that, I'm, I'm for that, too. Uh, so again, you know, my last yeah. words to everybody listening. That's another shot. Uh, right <laughs> uh, my last words to everybody listening. Uh, again, just be encouraged in all that you do. Uh, be free. Be motivated. You know, be led in all that you do, and don't stop pursuing your passion. Don't give up. Don't stop dreaming. Uh, regardless of everything you go through, you feel like people have left you alone. Uh, remember, one God is always in control, and that freedom belongs to you. That's good. I hate to say this one thing because you, you touched on something really good just there. <laughs> you said be somebody's key. Mm -hmm. That's good right there, man. Mm -hmm. That's good right there. Because imagine your mentor did do all his all his work. Mm -hmm. That would be a good mentor, man. Right. So I'm a, I'm gonna just let y'all let that just <laughs> yeah we'll marinate. leave y'all with the, 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 the final marinate, word man. the final word <laughs> we're gonna have to get him again later in the year man so he can come back and just talk I feel like Dr. Phil came in here today man <laughs> but man like I always say guys appreciate y'all tuning in on iHeartRadio bro ten countries every week man Ooh. but I'm not taking credit man that's all God yes, man yes sir I'm gonna give big shout out to it. number one partner man the head man the one that's been with us since day one and that's Rockefeller's Barbershop Rico Rodriguez you want to get a haircut you're in San Antonio already stop by 1733 Babcock Road that's San Antonio Texas and we got Miss T and yo we got a new commercial I'm gonna just let you hear the new commercial because we got new blood in here too, man. So before I let you go, man, I want to say what I always say. Keep God first, stay focused, and peace.